the Regional Director of the OST National Capital Region, and I will be your moderator for this session. Welcome to the first plenary session of the Luzon Regional Scientific Meeting. In this session, we have three esteemed speakers who will discuss topics related to plastic waste. Before we start, a summary of discussions from the Visayas Regional Scientific Meeting will be presented. After the presentation, a discussant or a reactor will present her opinions on the presented topics. This will be followed by the short open forum. We would like to, remain, to remind our speakers to be conscious of their allotted time. You will only be given 30 minutes to present. Likewise, the discussant reactor will be given 10 minutes. For the audience, if you have questions, you may opt to write on the piece of paper that will be provided by the ushers and usherettes. Together with your name and affiliation, please give your questions to the ushers at the side of the stage. To manage our time, priority will be given to the written questions. Our rapporteur for this session is Ms. Virginia G. Bilguera. Let me read her profile. Ms. Virginia G. Bilguera is the Assistant Regional Director for Field Operation Services of the Department of Science and Technology, Region 2. Her expertise is on the field of business and public administration. She currently holds DOST 2's Small Enterprise Technology Upgrading Program and the Regional Scientific Laboratory. ARD Bilguera attended numerous seminars, conferences, workshops, and short training courses from 1993 up to late last year. She was even deployed to Osaka, Japan to be represent to the representative of Region 2 in the leadership seminar held on November 2018. Furthermore, she is frequently invited as a judge to various investigatory projects and quiz bees and an evaluator to different researchers conducted in the region. She achieved various local awards and even with such achievement in life, she remained her feet grounded. Now to give the summary of the plenary session one from the Visayas RSM, we have again NAST Philippine Vice President and Mathematical and Physical Sciences Division Chair, Academician Fabian M. Dairit. Magandang hapon at salamat Director Patiling Hoog. So what I will do is to present the summary presentations on plastic waste which were delivered at the first regional scientific meeting in Tacloban last March 20. So there were three speakers, uh, myself, uh, Academician Rola, and Academician Kulaba, with the titles here, and the reaction paper. So I uh, summarize ko yung mga binanggit nila para may continuity dun sa pag-usapan ngayon. So this is my presentation, and I focused mainly on the uh, regulatory and management strategies on plastic waste. So um, we all heard about, we all know about the three R's, diba? reduce, recycle, and reuse. Pero kahit na meron tayong three R's, dami pa rin basura. So obviously, the three R's is not enough to address the problem of plastic waste. So this is a, uh, some observations on uh, institutional mechanisms related to plastic waste. Yan ang flow, yung mga agencies that are related to this. Um, so, observations. First, Philippine laws and regulations tackle solid waste as a whole. So, that's in RA 9003. But plastic waste, which is part of solid waste, is a big problem. It needs a different strategy. <clears throat> now, the strategy of uh, 9003 is based on the end of pipe treatment mitigation. So, sa lahat niyan, parating landfill ang pinupunta ng basura. Eh, ngayon, puno na yung ating landfill. Uh, there is lack of attention to science and technology in, uh, hand, in addressing plastic waste. Uh, in the law, there's minimal role assigned to DTI, Department of Trade and Industry, and DOST. And there's more support needed for plastic waste, recycling industry, and research and development. So this is the outline of the solid waste management in the Philippines under RA 9003. 
<clears throat> and it's implemented at the bottom by the LGUs. So that's the city, the municipality, and the barangay. Um, pero from the figure, ang, after all of that's done with some recycling done, landfill pa rin ang pinatutunguan ng basura. Eh, ang dami ng ano. So what we want to do is to um, convert that. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, dapat ganito na. Malit na yung landfill, but for that to happen, you have to have a bigger recycling industry and a reuse industry. Ngayon, um, so the, basically the, the law, 9003, expects the barangay to do all of this, but obviously the problem of plastics is quite complicated and needs a lot of resources. So you really need to develop industries to do both recycling and reuse. Now, ito yung, this is from the website of the Philippine Plastics Industry Association. This is the way they see themselves. So, may upstream, midstream, downstream, and then their products. And what we think, next slide, dapat maging ganito na. We should try to develop biodegradable polymers and also develop a recycling industry. So, you add those to the process and then the recycling industry, of course, will get its raw materials from the used uh, plastic products. Next slide. So, in the end, the laws and regulations work best within the right ecosystem. So, <clears throat> maraming gustong gawin yung RA9003, but you need all of these other components to make the law work. So, next slide. Um, so, there were some um, suggestions for how to manage it. Um, first, Abandon the end of pipe approach to plastic waste and dependence on landfills. Next slide. Uh, move from three R's to four R's. The four R's is redesign, the fourth R. Um, engagement of all stakeholders is essential, so you need industry, government, and consumers. Uh, fourth, education for sustainable lifestyle and responsible consumption is essential. In fact, that's that's the sustainable development uh, goal number 12. Uh, number five, eliminate non-essential plastic products. And uh, among those non-essential plastic products, I have about mga balloon. Ang balloon, siyempre pampaganda yan, but <laughs> they're really non-essential. Uh, number six, uh, industry should adopt a circular economic model, which is the model being proposed uh, in Europe. Uh, number seven, we need an improved governance framework uh, with a supportive ecosystem. Uh, we need R&D for recycling, biodegradable materials, safe chemical additives. Not some plastics have additives in them, and some of them are toxic. Uh, non non fossil fuel based starting materials, in other words, coming from um, biological resources, and strengthen and harmonize uh, global programs. We cannot do this alone. It has to be a international effort. So yun ang um, first talk. The second talk was given by academician Agnes Rolla, uh, who is a expert in social sciences, uh, challenges in RA9003 implementation. So ito yung kanyang presentation. Um, for her, it's <clears throat> these are the challenges of the, of the current law. Uh, they need capacity building to understand provisions of the law, uh, fund generation, because in the law actually 9003 may fund generation uh, component, but you need technical assistance to assist credit facilities and to connect to the private sector. So the private sector is really the recycling industry. Um, well, she says that there are too many members of the Solid Waste Management Board, um, so it's difficult to have a quorum. So she thinks that she believes that it has to be uh, redone so that it's more um, efficient. Uh, number four, unclear delineation of the various members of the provincial board and the lack of enforcement of ordinances. So these are some of our institutional innovations in sustainable solid waste management. This is from a previous study that she did. <clears throat> and uh, for her, the very important is what they call adaptive collaborative solid waste management. Um, in other words, the management has to adapt to the situation and has to be collaborative. Hindi pwede yung top-down, na sasabihan mo yung LGU na ito yung kailangan gawin. The 
measures that are to be adopted have to be uh, collaboratively agreed on. So these are the components, building partnerships, planning strategic action, developing the solid waste management plan, and then implementing an investment plan. Um, so these are the determinants for a successful solid waste management program. Um, and this can be applied to plastic waste, management of plastic waste as well. So you need a condition of cooperation, a committed, in this case it was a river council because the, the study area was, uh, they were monitoring the river, uh, knowledge of the watershed, um, stakeholders' attitudes regarding incentives, clear ground rules, transparency, face-to-face -face dialogue, uh, recognition of polycentric governance mechanisms. I guess in so LGU, you have the city, you have the municipality, you have the barangay, and it should be inclusive. Um, this shared some recommendations, strengthen institutions, uh, participatory um, management, uh, focusing on incentives for collaboration, um, leadership is very important, and then the role of academe in facilitating this process. Yeah, the third speaker was by uh, academician Alvin Colaba, and here he focused on life cycle analysis of plastic, specifically uh, comparing plastic carrying bags to paper bags. Kasi yung, di ba sinasabi ng marami tao, huwag na tayo mag plastic bag, mag paper bag na lang. Um, well, she just, he started by saying that the packaging is the leading uh, source of plastic waste, so she yung number one. So that includes a lot of single-use plastic. And then next he defined what, was, what he meant by life cycle assessment. So it's a whole process to evaluate environmental burdens. Basically it's a cradle-to-grave analysis of how you manufacture a product, the way it's used and the way it's uh, disposed of, and how it impacts on the environment. Um, so the life cycle as analysis of plastic, um, well, <clears throat> it's a major complicated, but it just shows you that there are, on the right, you see the types of impact. You have impact of disposal, impact of utilization of the product, impact in production, impact in raw material preparation, and raw material extraction. And depending on the, uh, the, um, environmental impact, iba-iba yung, ano, yung contributions niya. So it's a uh, sort of a complex analysis and you have to analyze each one individually. But in this case, he, met, he focused on plastic packaging. Um, the conclusion of his talk was to say that reusable bags has considerably less environmental impact compared to plastic bags and paper bags. So in this paper, they compared plastic bags, paper bags, and then yung non-woven, um, I'm not sure what PP is. Anyway, non-woven, siguro ito yung bayong. And um, just from the height of the, ano, the bars, malinaw na the, yung mga non-woven products are much better than paper and much better than plastic. So dapat na tayo meron ng mga bayong. So the conclusion, uh, production stage is the biggest damage among life cycle stages of producing single-use plastic and it is encouraged to adapt to reusable bags. And then the fourth uh, speaker was the reactor. And the reactor in this uh, session was the um, Takloban ano, um, Senro, I think. So he talked about problem of plastic waste and plastic pollution, Tacloban's experience. Um, he's, he's, he showed the, the types of plastic uh, waste that they had in Tacloban. So number one was plastic bags, and then you had the hard plastics, 5.6%. Ang styrofoam was, I think, 0.4%. But that's by weight. E magang ang styrofoam. Kaya, even though it's a small weight, it's actually a big volume. And then diapers and napkins were 4.3%.
So, those are the things that he highlighted. And so in Tacloban, they have 21 uh, junk shop operators. Now, the junk shops are mainly for recycling. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, for reuse, sorry. They do reuse, um, but not recycling. So, they've passed a city ordinance, uh, Integrated Solid Waste Management Ordinance uh, for the city of Tacloban, and they're proposing a no plastic ordinance. Um, so that's still in the process. I guess it depends on how the industry will react to this uh, no plastic ordinance. So yun ang ano. So that's the uh, summary of the of all the presentations that were made in Tacloban. Uh, so now the topics in Tacloban were mainly on the management side of plastic waste. Uh, our three speakers are more on the science and engineering uh, of biodegradable plastics as well as uh, the role of microorganisms in plastic. So, I'll turn it over to our moderator. So, maraming salamat. Thank you, Academician Dayrit. Let us now proceed to the first speaker of the plenary session one. Academician Ernesto J. Del Rosario will discuss bio biodegradable plastics, problems, and prospects. But before that, let me read Academician Del Rosario's profile for you. Academician Del Rosario obtained his BS Chemistry degree, magna cum laude, from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, in 1963. And his MS and PhD degrees in Physical Chemistry from Cornell University at Ithaca, New York, in 1966 and 1970, respectively. He did postdoctoral research in biotechnology at the University of New South Wales, Australia, in 1976 and 1977. He had several awards, including 10 Outstanding Young Men Award in 1978, which was sponsored by the Philippine JCs, and the Outstanding Young Scientist Award in 1980, given by the OST. He was elected member, academician of the National Academy of Science and Technology Philippines in 2011. Academician Del Rosario did pioneering research and development work at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, on novel and cost-effective ethanol fermentation processes from various substrates. His R&D work has spanned three decades and has produced more than 30 scientific technical publications. He has done notable R&D and several enzymes and has conducted extensive R&D work on membrane-based molecular separation processes. He has also done work on the colorization of alcohol distillery effluent using various methods such as microbial, flocculation, and ozonation. This research has provided alternative solutions towards solving the important problem of color pollution by distilleries. For four decades, Academician Del Rosario has taught several undergraduate and postgraduate courses in physical chemistry and biotechnology at UPLB. Let us all welcome Academician Del Rosario. Thank you, Director Patalingwood. Uh, I have a, uh, an interesting but difficult mission this afternoon. But anyway, I'm happy to be here. So my topic, as you can see, is uh, very technical. And one thing I don't want you to have is a nosebleed. Well, what do you get nosebleed from? From lack of understanding and information overload. So what I'll do is try to make my presentation understandable and minimize giving you an overload. Next, please. Okay, as you can see, uh, I'll be providing a rationale for my presentation. And then, of course, I have to define terms so we get understood. I mean, we, we, we get good communication. Then I'll... Uh, I'll discuss uh, some chemistry of plastics, data on production, 
how to test for biodegradation, recycling to some extent, and then summary and recommendations. Well, just to give you a quote from the famous British naturalist, David Attenborough, he said that more than 8 million tons of plastic reaches the sea every year. There will be more plastic than fish in the sea by 2050, and 99% of the planet's seabirds will have eaten some, including, of course, people. Okay, uh, this uh, bit of uh, semantics or definitions. Biomass, as opposed to fossil mass, comes from recent biological origin. I mean, not in the very old past, not the fossilized uh, materials. Biodegradation refers to bio, biological uh, degradation using microorganisms. Then we have two types, aerobic in the presence of air and anaerobic or abiotic, sorry, anaerobic in the absence of air. Okay, uh, we start with some chemical definitions. Plastic, which is short for thermoplastic, is a polymer. Polymer means many uh, subunits, poly, many. So you have the ele chemical elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sometimes nitrogen, sulfur, etc. So these uh, polymers or many sub uh, subunit molecules come from either fossil materials like, like uh, petroleum, natural gas, or coal, or they can come from biomass or recent uh, recently photosynthesized materials. As uh, everyone is, fam is, is, ob is uh, obvious of, plastic is now a worldwide serious problem. I'm sure every one of you uh, have uh, noticed that. Everyone has noticed that. Okay, now some uh, Possibly nose bleeding material. I hope you don't get get that. Uh, the first, the topmost is called polyethylene. Poly again is many. So the small letter N means many. So N can be from one. Of course, if, if it's one, then you have only one of the CH2CH2, which is ethylene. So some of you have taken high school chemistry now in the senior high knows that is ethylene. Then you have, what is that? Ethyl chloride. And then you have, you have propylene or propi propene with three carbons. Then you have uh, ethyl benzene, etc. The, the, the second to the last one, by the way, is polyethylene tereptalate. Some of you are bright in chemistry. will notice there are only two chemical bonds on the carbon, second to the right. You know, you need two, two bonds there. So that's, uh, that should be a carbonyl. So anyway, I'm telling you that because there was a misprint here. So that's polyethylene tereptalate. There are two, carbo two bonds missing from the carbon on the right. So again, this is polyethylene uh, I'm sorry, the, the second one is polyvinyl chloride. That's vinyl chloride because uh, I, I said uh, ethyl, but that's vinyl. Because there, there used to be a double bond there. So PE, PVC, PP, PS, styrene, then the last one is polyurethane. Okay, back to simple definitions. Thermo means heat. So thermoplastic means it's uh, moldable by heating. Moldable meaning you can change the shape. So it's thermoplastic. 
Di ba alam ninyo yung salitang plastic? Ang plastic mo naman. Hindi ibig sabihin molecule kang simple. Because you are moldable. Madali kang arang balimbing, something like that. Or you can change your, your behavior. Okay, the other type of polymer is called thermosetting. Thermosetting means once you heat it, it changes shape and you cannot change the shape anymore. So it's not moldable by heating. These thermosetting polymers are not recyclable, whereas the thermoplastic because they have cross-link structure and the thermoplastics are linear. An example of this is polyurethane. Okay, now fossil-based, that's the bane of present civilization or the, the problem now. Fossil means again, comes from fossilized materials like petroleum or coal. 7% of all petroleum is converted into plastic, so it's a very big uh, percentage going into possible pollutants like PEPP, PET, PS. These are the most common uh, fossil-based plastics. So what is PE? That is the usual uh, uh, clear plastic, even the sandbags. Uh, polystyrene, by the way, mentioned styrofoam is made of polystyrene, meaning you have a carbon, uh, sorry, a benzene ring with a metal group that's styrene. Okay, now something I want to emphasize. You can make plastics from either uh, petroleum, just to, to use a common uh, fossil material, from petroleum, or from biomass, like, like uh, cellulose or sugar or starch. Now, if you, get, if you make plastic from petroleum, that's called fossil-based. Most, I would say more than 85 or 90% of all plastics are made from these uh, fossil materials. That's why they are very difficult, as I will discuss later. Now we are getting more now of what are called bioplastics. Bio meaning coming from biomass. Well, just to clarify the matter now, it doesn't mean that all plastics made from petroleum are not biodegradable because there are some like polyesters which can be degraded by microorganisms. And there are some plastics made from biomass which cannot be degraded by microorganisms, like polyethylene, for example, made from ethanol. You see, ethanol or ethyl alcohol, the normal drinking type of alcohol, can be made from sugar, as everyone knows. And sugar can be made from sugar cane, or derived from sugar cane or from starch. So it doesn't mean that if you make plastic from biomass, it is biodegradable because polyethylene by itself is not biodegradable. So I, I hope that's clear. Okay, it's explained here. Ethylene again, you can see CH2CH2 with a double band can be polymerized into polyethylene. So this is a little bit of my lecture in general chemistry when I was much younger. Uh, students, please concentrate. <laughs> Ethylene, when you polymerize it by chemical method, can be made into the polymer. So again, the polymer, you can see, of course, it's not nice there to put the CH2 behind, uh, inside the bracket because the bracket there should be include the two CH2, so it becomes uh, ethylene multiplied many times. The one who prepared this slide was not me. It was a non-organic chemist. Well, <laughs> I'm not an organic chemist, but I know enough. So you can make 
ethylene, as I said, from hydrocarbon, petroleum is a hydrocarbon, contains only carbon and hydrogen. There are no oxygen and other chemical elements. It can also be made from ethanol. Just remove the water or its OH, you form ethylene. So what I'm, I said, I'm just uh, repeating, polyethylene, because of its chemical structure, cannot be uh, degraded by microorganisms. It's like you cannot eat bone, dog bone. Nor you cannot even eat the, the shell of a shrimp. Do you know that? Because you cannot, uh, or we cannot, uh, digest chitin. We do not have the enzyme chitination in our body. So you need an enzyme to, to degrade any biological material. So again, as I said, ethylene by, uh, rather polyethylene by itself is non-biodegradable, whether it comes from fossil-based material or from biomass. Okay, biodegradable, I, I think I have to fast track. Biodeg because I have more in, uh, equally, if not most in, more interesting things to say. Biodegrad biodegradable means you can degrade it into carbon dioxide, uh, water, and uh, biomass, and sometimes methane using microorganisms. Okay, this is uh, an idea of how, how biodegradation comes about. The polymer, like polyethylene, no, sorry, not polyethylene, but let's say polylactic acid, is uh, depolymerized into smaller units. We call them oligomers, meaning smaller, or fewer rather, fewer subunits. Dimers, meaning two subunits, let's say of ethylene. Again, that's not a good example of uh, lactic acid, and then monomer lactic acid. Aerobic using, in the presence of air, this, the, the, the intermediates, the oligomers, etc., become carbon, carbon dioxide and water. In the, in the absence of air, you get methane plus uh, other gases and water. Okay, this is a bit of uh, chemical reaction. The, the uh, carbon polymer, like polylactic acid, in the presence of oxygen, becomes incorporated as uh, biomass of the microorganism, then finally mineralized into carbon dioxide in water. The extent of biodegradation can be calculated in terms of the carbon dioxide evolved and then divided by the, the mass of carbon uh, as polymer. Okay, now a little bit again of semantics. Bioplastics, as I said, means biologically derived plastic. That's one, uh, one uh, you might say. Polyethylene made from starch is not biodegradable. All polyethylene is not biodegradable. 
the frequency from either positive or from minus positive opinion or by minus. So there is a you might say a subset of the bigger set. Meaning you have the biggest set here is by plastics, then you have the subsets which can be overlapping. Okay, that's another way of presenting it. Just to give you another example, you can have biodegradable, bio-based, of course, that's the familiar polylactic acid, polyhydroxyalkanoates, and cellophane. Cellophane was one of the first bioplastics discovered. It's derived from cellulose. You know, the, the plastic that you use as a wrapping paper during Christmas, that's cellophane, that's derived from cellulose. Of course, being derived from cellulose is biodegradable. But again, as I said, uh, polyethyl bio-PE is bio-based, but it's non-biodegradable. Okay, so you can see here, most of the petrochemical plastics are non-biodegradable, like PE, PEP, PPE, PPS, PBC. Okay, I, I, I won't go into this, or else I won't be able to tell you uh, nice other stories. Okay. Compostable refers to being uh, degradable by composting. Composting is you let, let it rot, basically, in the presence of microorganisms. Biodegradable is not exactly the same as compostable because biodegradable, again, there's a question, what, what is the mechanism of biodegradation? Composting, as Dr. G. Uh, Cuevas here uh, is an expert of, means you compost it, it com it's completely degraded into the final uh, final products, which are non-toxic. So, so uh, uh, plastic should be not only biodegradable, but also compostable. Uh, here are some commercial bioplastics, but I will not go into this. These are becoming now more important. And you can see the some Sorry, uh, I'm ahead. That means I should be go going faster. Uh, okay, this will give you an idea of how fast the plastics degrade. Half-life means the half of the time or half of the total lifetime. Because the total lifetime, you can measure it. But you can measure the half-life. So the, the most durable plastics are polyamides like nylon. You see why nylon is very durable? Because of the structure, it's hard to break it down, either uh, using microorganisms or even using chemical reagents. Polyanhydrides are easier, uh, degre easily degraded because they are very reactive, meaning you can, you can uh, easily degrade it using microorganisms or even chemical reagents. Okay. Uh, the the na tayo. Okay. Please. Okay. Now, just to give you an idea, the production of bioplastics is very, very small. Still increasing. In Asia, we are not even uh, mentioned in terms of production of bioplastics. What are mentioned are China, Japan, Malaysia, South Korea, Taiwan, and Thailand. Because we have a minuscule uh, bioplastic uh, production industry. Next slide, please. Uh, next. Okay, this is now a very hot issue. Uh, oxo biodegradation means you add oxygen, or rather not oxygen, but oxidative catalyst, meaning uh, uh, chemical reagents that can oxidize. Oxidize means increase the, the what's called the valence number. That's more of a chemical term. These are sorts of uh, metals like manganese or iron. 
So in other words, some companies, many companies now are adding these chemicals to increase biodegradation. And uh, even ITDI is now involved in helping companies uh, use these uh, oxo-biodegradable additives. Next. Next. And then there's uh, the other type, photodegradable plastics in the presence of light, especially sunlight which has ultraviolet uh, wavelengths. Uh, chemical degradation is uh, enhanced, so that also helps, yes. And in fact, there is now a local company which has been accredited by ITDI, IT, I think, which which uh, are able to, to provide additives or to sell additives to local companies to make them biodegradable, the plastics biodegradable. Next. Now the problem is there are two, at least two studies in the United States and in the Czech Republic that show that these additives in their studies were not effective, not effective in enhancing biodegradation. Next. Okay, uh, next. Okay, another uh, aspect of uh, waste, uh, rather uh, plastic waste uh, management is recycling as mentioned also by Dr. Dairit. You can use mechanical or chemical recycling. Next. Well, I just mentioned it because gives an idea of how to reuse plastic as road building material in the Philippines. Yes, next. Okay, in summary, uh, most fossil-based fossil plastics are non-biodegradable and we can get away from this uh, very, very useful, relatively, relatively cheap uh, plastic materials like PE, poly, even polystyrene. So the question is, what do we do? We cannot just stop producing. So one way would be to probably try to make them biodegradable using additives. That's why uh, in my recommendation, I will, I will uh, mention that, that. But next summary statement, or please, next. OK, uh, yeah, I mentioned this already. Then next, next, so recommendations, government should give uh, some incentives, tax incentives or even exemptions to processors and manufacturers of 